question. So in this job, we're going to do an example for finding the local and endpoint extreme values for a function using the first derivative test. The function is x minus 2 sine x, and we're doing it on the interval, closed interval 0 to 6 pi. Okay. Uh, there's another video where we do a polynomial example, which is easier in some ways. And this, this requires a little more thinking. So what's the derivative? What's the first step? Compute the derivative. What's the derivative? 1 minus 2 cosine x. Okay. Is it undefined anywhere in the interior of the domain? No. Okay. There are no points for... And we are following this here. Is it still? Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Uh, find all x where f prime x is 0. So we are trying to solve... Remember, we are trying to solve where the derivative is 0, not the original function. We are trying to solve 1 minus 2 cosine x is 0. What does that give you? Pi. So cosine x is half. Mm -hmm. So pi over three. Pi over three is is one such value. Mm -hmm. What are the others? So once you found one solution for cosine, mm -hmm. so the graph of cosine looks like that, right? It's plus two pi. Well, definitely plus two pi, but there's also another solution which is mm -hmm. negative pi over three plus mm -hmm. pi. So, but negative pi of 3 is not included, but 2 pi translates are. So, we get, what are the things we get? We get pi, pi over, over three. 3. What are the solutions between 0 and 2 pi? 2 pi minus pi over 3. Okay, what's that? 5, 5 pi, pi over, over 3. three. So, there's 60 degrees and 300 degrees. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now you'll get uh, four pi. more solutions, just... Add add two pi to these ones, so you get pi over three. Okay, I'll just write it as two pi plus pi over three. Mm -hmm. Two pi plus five pi over three, and there'll be two more. So there's four, four pi, pi plus pi over three. Four pi plus five pi over three, and that's it. If we are in the interval of zero to six pi, okay. Okay, good. Now, uh, and, and these are also the critical points, so the step 3 and 4, if you will, because so the, 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 these are the six critical points for the function. Now, step 5 is determining the sine of 1 minus 2 cosine x, whether it's positive or negative, on each of the intervals. So, what are the intervals we have? We have uh, 0 to pi over 3. Mm -hmm. Pi over 3 to 5 pi over 3. Then you'll have 5 pi over 3 to this. Actually, the 0 to pi over 3, you can really sort of think of it as being from the previous one, which unfortunately is not included. But it's sort of like, it's almost like determining the sign on from negative pi over 3 to pi. So that was the previous solution, right? And, and once you found these two answers, then it will just repeat according to the same pattern, right? So 5 pi over 3 to 2 pi plus pi. So this to this will be the same as negative pi over 3 to pi over 3 in sign, the sign of that. So what's the sign from negative pi over 3 to pi over 3? Now negative pi over 3 is not in the domain, but if it if you just extended it, what would be the sign of 1 minus 2 cosine x? Be negative. Why? Because uh Cosine x, the range of cosine x will be... Cosine x will be bigger than half when you are be when you are between negative pi over 3 and pi over 3, right? Yeah. Oh, so, it's negative. So it's negative, Sorry. right? That's what you said, right? I forgot what I said. Oh, okay. Uh, so the derivative is negative, mm -hmm. right? Which means you can think the f is decreasing around 0, right? It's because the derivative 1... So you can just do the plug a point and check. So, although zeros are the end point here, you should, technically you shouldn't be plug it, plugging it in, but you can still do that because it's changing continuously. Add zero, the derivative is one minus two, which is minus one. So, add zero, the, it's, it's going down. Okay, so it's negative. Mm -hmm. And pi over three to five pi over three, it's what? Positive. Positive. You can do the same reasoning. Okay. And now you can therefore fill it in, uh, the behavior on each of the intervals. 
But let's just directly write down all the local max uh, points of local max and local min. So at pi over three, do you have a local min or local max? Local min. It's decreasing on the immediate left, increasing on the immediate right. Derivative is negative and positive. So local min at pi over three, and now because of the periodic nature of the derivative, you get local min where else? Two pi plus pi over three. Hmm. Four pi plus pi over three. And local max? Five pi over three. And two pi plus five pi over three. Four pi plus five pi over three. Okay, now we have to figure out the endpoints. So at zero, at the at this end point, it's sort of starting out, it's on it's in the negative piece, right? Mm -hmm. So zero you have a local max. Endpoint max. Good, yes. So you have a max endpoint max at zero. And and now at at six pi, what's going to happen is it's it's again going to be in a negative thing, right? It's going to be this to the next thing, right? Can be this is this is the same as six pi minus pi over three. So it's again going to be negative, but now it's it's to the right. So it's at the right end of something negative. So what's it? Endpoint minimum. Yeah, so you have an endpoint minimum at six pi. So the endpoint max and endpoint. Good. Okay. And now, of course, we haven't calculated down the values here because it's all the paper is already full, but you would calculate, you could calculate the values. Now the values of the local minimum at these three points will not be the same. Okay? The, the behavior is the same as far as whether or not it's a local maximum. The values are not the same because this function is not periodic. Okay? The derivative is, but the function isn't. So let's just see. What's the value at pi over 3? What's f of pi over 3? Pi over 3? That will be pi over 3 minus 2, square root 3 over 2, square root 3. So that's pi over 3 minus square, square root, root of 3. three. Right. Let me just get out another one for temporary writing. Let's just do all of them. So f of 0 is? Zero. zero. Okay. Well, the the picture should be so this is uh, two pi. This is four pi. This is six pi. So this is the kind of picture you want. Okay. F of zero is zero. Mm -hmm. F of pi over three. That's the local min. So it's going down between zero and pi over three. Mm -hmm. And this, as you said, is pi over 3 minus root 3. Now, if we've done our work right, should this be less than 0 or greater than 0? Less than 0. Okay, let's just check. What's pi over 3 approximately? 1.1. 1. 1. It's less than, it's about 1.05, okay. So this is our answer. What I'm writing here is just checking. 1.05 minus 1.73, which is less than 0, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what's the next one we want? The next is the local max at 5, 5 over 3. What's that? That will be... 5, 5 over 3. Mm -hmm. Minus 2 sine 5, 5 over 3. What's sine 5, 5 over 3? That's... Mm, negative... That's negative square root 3 over 2. Yeah, so when you put in minus 2 times that, what will you get? Plus. Plus square root 3. Mm -hmm. That's that's much bigger than this, right? So it's came up quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Then f of uh, 2 pi plus pi over 3, which is 7 pi over 3 here, mm -hmm. is what? 2 pi, uh, 7 pi over 3 minus square root of 3. Great. Okay, and you could do the remaining ones. Let's just so, so so this will be greater than this. This will be less than this. This will be greater than this, right? As so on. 
it's not it's not a priori clear how how say this will compare to this just from the local max window. In this case, you can see that each local min is less than the next one, right? But each time we just added a two pi, right? I mean, going from pi OT to two pi plus pi OT three, the, the periodic part remains the same. The linear part just gets shifted up. Uh, but it's not clear just from whether it's a local max min how you compare this and this. That's from this function. What is f of six pi? Six pi. Six pi. So that's the last one. Okay, good.